Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Pardon me. My name is Jess, and I'm a volunteer with KSAC, and usually on Wednesdays, but this week on Thursday, um, I host the Feminist Book Chat here, and this is an opportunity to sort of give a deep dive into one book and talk about feminist reading in general. So, <clears throat> for the month of May, I'm really excited that we are uh, doing a giveaway, and it's a weekly giveaway. And so, uh, in order to get in on that, all you have to do is simply comment on one of these videos, um, or uh, whether on Facebook or on Instagram, make your own Instagram post using the hashtag uh, KSACFBC, or comment on one of our giveaway posts with a suggestion for a feminist read or a feminist author that you really like. I will share those here weekly and randomly one person who contributes will be chosen to receive uh, a gift pack that includes um, a book of your choice within reason and a bit of KSAC swag as well. I think we've got some stickers maybe and some t-shirts and some fun things. So if you're interested in getting involved, please comment and let us know what you love, what you're reading, what you have read. <clears throat> and keep in mind that it doesn't have to be, um, like it can be anything. It doesn't have to be a novel. It can be nonfiction. It can be poetry. It can be an anthology. Uh, there's lots of different ways that we can read books. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, even really great audiobook suggestions are awesome because some books really the best way to read them is with your ears. So lots of options there. So comment uh, on Facebook or on Instagram and we will um, be randomly choosing as well as reading out those pieces. Uh, you'll have to mind my distraction. My cat is in a mood today and he is currently running around making a fool of himself. So, and now he's meowing. Thank you for that, Darth Vader. Um, so, back on topic, we have um, a couple of feminist book suggestions that I want to read today. Uh, one is for Nora McKerney, who is a feminist author that someone loves. Um, and she writes about her own personal losses in life and also hosts an amazing podcast called Terrible Thanks for Asking that ranges from sad, happy, and both and will make you cry for all those reasons. That sounds amazing. Um, thank you for that suggestion. And it's not one I've heard of, so I'm excited to check it out myself. We've got another one for a book called Rebecca by Duffine Demure. Um, Demurier, sorry. This book is about a young girl who is offered a seemingly perfect life as a second wife of a wealthy uh, widower. Although once she arrives in their new home, she discovers that not everything is as it seemed, and the presence of her husband's first wife, Rebecca, seems to follow our protagonist wherever she goes. It's a captivating mystery as our young protagonist wrestles with her own obsession with the ghosts of Rebecca. That sounds really interesting too, and also not one that I've read, so that's exciting. So thank you for submitting your suggestions. Please submit more. It'll enter you into a giveaway and will help make sure that there are more voices than just mine as part of this stream. So <clears throat> today I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, love beyond body, space, and time. Um, sorry about the glare. There we go. And I know it's backwards. We're doing our best here. So this is um, a fairly slim book. It's a anthology of short stories. Um, it's edited by Hope Nicholson. It's largely Canadian, although as you can imagine, um, because this is an indigenous um, LGBTQ plus uh, sci-fi anthology, uh, borders are a little different because borders are colonial, of course, so, um, but largely Canadian. And this is, uh, as I said, a fairly slim collection, um, and it features uh, urban fantasy and science fiction short stories written by, um, by Indigenous authors, and they feature a lot of queer themes. So there's uh, it's not just about romantic things. There's also 
um, about self-love and about those journeys that sometimes we take and there's a lot of really wonderful stories in here. There's probably a few authors you may recognize. There were a few authors that I recognized, I'll say that. Um, one being Sherry Dameline, um, another being um, Daniel Heath Justice. So there was a few uh, folks that I was familiar with and a few that I wasn't, um, including Nathan Adler and uh, Negan Sinclair. So there's a few um, a few folks that were new to me, um, and this was published in 2016 on Bedside Press. So uh, one of the things I wanted to mention about this book is that some of the stories are a lot heavier than others. Um, some of them are dealing with a lot of um, pain or confusion or struggle, um, and some of them are more hopeful, and some of them are both. Some of them are more lighthearted, some of them are really dense, and actually as I was trying to find a passage to read today, it was a real challenge and I couldn't because it felt like, because the, shory, the stories are short, in a short story collection, um, or anthology, sorry, that um, it was either going to give away too much or it was really out of context, and one of the joys of short stories is it really plunges you into a world. There's not a lot of lead up, and so that can be really exciting. So right now, I think a lot of people are having trouble reading. <clears throat> reading takes focus. It takes the uh, ability to sort of leave this world behind and enter a new one. Um, and to escape that way. It often requires vulnerability. And all of those things are really hard right now. And so I want to deeply recognize that reading might be a challenge for you right now. And as someone who is an avid reader, reading has been, reading has been a challenge for me too. It's okay. That's all right. If you want to try reading and doing a bit more reading, I do suggest something like short stories. Because short stories are meant to hold your attention for a short amount of time. They're meant to leave you um, wanting more. They're not meant to answer all of the questions. And one of the reasons that's really good right now is because you are there for a momentary experience and you don't have to follow as many threads. So if you're having, having trouble focusing, if you're having trouble really letting go of some of the anxiety or concern or pain that you're feeling because of things right now, then <clears throat> this is an opportunity to sort of go into another world for a little while while not needing to be fully immersed to get something out of it, while being able to, you know, sort of dip your toes in. Um, and you're really just given a splash um, from a bucket with a short story. You don't know who these people are, you don't know what's going on, you're launched in, in the middle of a situation, and you get to have this little snippet that often leaves you with something to think about, but isn't something that has, uh, you're not going to have a big book hangover, um, as I often do. So I really suggest short stories right now as a pathway to that. Um, and really check out marginalized authors, because short stories from marginalized authors are a great way to learn about a lot of people doing some great writing, to get a sense of what their writing is like, and to really broaden that base. It's often um, more accessible for something like this to be published to get your work into it than it is for, you know, a 500 page book to be uh, taken into traditional publishing. So check out short stories, check out works from marginalized authors, and make sure you enter our giveaway. Thank you so much for visiting with me again this week. And I look forward to those giveaway entries. And I will be in touch with the winner of this week so that we can get you your prize. Thank you so much, everyone. Make sure you check out the KSAC feeds for more um, programming and more support needs. Have a lovely day, everyone.